Explanation tonight are going to be pretty quick, right? I will kind of go through the at least the, the full talkie explanation because most of you guys have seen this before, but I don't think I don't think Derry has. So uh, let's go over it. Today is going to be focusing on escaping the mount position. Are there more ways that we can go over? Yeah, we'll probably add a few more on Thursday, but for today, let's cover like our big. Really, it's two techniques, but the third one we do today is going to blend the upa escape with an elbow escape, and it's going to be kind of a reactionary thing. So very first one, we'll go through this pretty quick. Player obtains the mount on me, a standard mount, two knees on the mat. Okay, he goes down whether he's in a skydive or just partial skydive. Keep in mind, there's basically three positions that I can trap this arm with. If his arms are fairly close to me, my favorite is to get an overhook because now I can really manipulate that elbow in. Okay, so if we're gonna go with the overhook, there's also if his arms are a little farther out and I can't really break it down, I can come underhook. When I come underhook, I don't wanna be on the bicep or the forearm, I wanna be right like I'm folding up a lawn chair. I wanna come right in on his joint, try to collapse it this way. For me, this is the least applicable, okay? And then there's the number four or the number three where he's way out. My, my underhook's not working, my overhook is too shallow, so here's where I'm gonna keep my hand like a spatula, like I'm flipping a burger or a pancake. And remember, I break friction by going up, bring it to the top of my head as I trap the foot and either push on the hip or the armpit. So I'm either bringing this elbow in, trapping the foot, getting my heel as close to the butt as possible, and you can either make a C-clamp and push under the armpit, or you can push the hip, really it's kind of a, a fielder's choice. And please remember, at least with me, I'm, I'm a big stickler about this. Don't bridge and roll, why? Because if his knee is on the mat and I try to bridge and roll, he's got a base, I've got to push him through his base. But if I bridge as high as I can first, that should take their knees off the mat, making it easier to roll. Bridge, now his knees are up, and as soon as I come out of this, I need to get my head up because I need to be uh, leery of arm bars, triangles, or any of those. So that is if I hit an overhook and underhook. What if I have to flip the burger or the pancake, as I call it for kids? If he's way out the skydive, kind of doing what he should be doing, he just obtained. Not viable, not viable. Flip the burger, break the friction on the mat by taking his hand up and then circle it and put it on top of your head like it's a hat. Lower body and far hand doing the same thing. Break, pin, up and then over. Up, over, gain posture as quick as possible. Okay, Upa escape. So we either have overhook or underhook if his arms are a little bit closer like this. Okay, or sometimes they have the cross base here. In which case, Aaron would hook this arm and take me that way because now I can't increase my base. All right, so the first one is the Upa. If you guys have questions, I will be around, but I know most of you guys know this, so I'll be kind of giving you a little more eyeball time. All right, ready? One, two, three. Okay, next one is going to be the elbow escape. It's called the elbow escape, right? But I'm gonna make sure everybody knows this. I say it every single time it takes this lesson over the last X amount of years. I don't actually have to use my elbows on their leg. In fact, quite often, especially if you have like kind of longer, skinnier athletic arms like me, it might not be my elbow. It might be like the midpoint of my forearm, okay? So uh, that being said, let's do a cutaway this way since most of the action is gonna be on your right leg. Okay, so just for beginner, or just to begin with, go ahead and get down a little bit. Maybe I tried this and none of it works, okay? First thing for the elbow escape, I do not want to be man-hugging him. When I hug him, I'm holding him into a good position. He's in one of the two dominant positions that there is in jiu-jitsu, the mounts in the back. If I hug him, not only am I holding him here to smash me, but soon we're going to talk about how we can start isolating these arms for things like kimuras and arm bars. It's really easy to do. So the first thing's first, I've got to get my T-Rex arms. I need to get my arms between my chest and his. And not just out here, because again, he can attack katagatames and a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm trying to get my elbows in, my elbows need to be attached to my body, my hands need to be in between us. I'm not so much pushing him because now I'm asking him to arm bar me. I'm keeping my T-Rex arms here. Boom, I get my arms as a frame. Next thing, see how his feet are underneath my hamstring? So if I were just to straighten my leg and bring it down, his heel is there. This is not what I want. I want to do that thing I like to call the kick line, like in the old movies where the, the girls get together and hold shoulders and do the kick line. If I want to clear this leg, I don't just straighten my leg out and drop it down. I basically do the kick line. I can do one of two things. I can kick it over to the side and scrape the heel, or my favorite is to straighten my leg out, pretend like there's a piece of chalk in between my toes and there's a big drawing board and I draw a huge circle. So whichever way works for you. I like to come here, draw a big circle, get my hamstring flat to the ground. Now I kind of scoot the foot over. Now is when I can turn on my side. I have to clear my leg first. If his heel is under my leg, this will not work. So I clear the heel, I get my whole hamstring on the ground. Not the leg can be bent, that's fine. I'll use it to push in a second. Now, I'm gonna take my hand on the far side. I'm gonna bring it to the hip. Why? Go ahead and sit up for a second. When I bring my hand here, I keep my elbow as a frame on his hip. If I, to do, if I were to do this, Aaron can start to slide in my back. So I need to leave my elbow there in his far hip to keep him from going to a technical mount using my back. So, go ahead on real fast. Once I get my hand safe and clear my leg, 
My hand comes to the hip, but my elbow is covering his other hip as a frame. Now, I'm gonna put my hand, forearm or elbow, I'm gonna put it on his knee. So I've, I've got basically from the top of his femur to the bottom of his femur as a frame. Now that I've cleared the leg, I'm going to start to push him down as I turn on my side. I turn on my side, I push the leg down as far as I can, and I use my knee to pummel underneath. As I'm pushing his leg down, I pummel the knee, and I gotta get above the knee line, and then clamp down. Remember, I'm always talking to you guys about half guard, the battle is for the knee line. So if I can clear this, coming here and getting above the knee line first and closing my, you can, you can cross your feet, you can triangle, whatever's gonna work best for you. So I just went to one side first. I'm on my side. I feed his knee into half guard. Now I put my shoulders back on the mat and I do the exact same thing on the other hip, using my frame across from hip to hip, my other hand on the leg, and I'm gonna push, feed. If my foot gets, uh, give him a little rotation. If my foot gets trapped here, do you guys remember the trick? If I'm on my back and he's smashing my heel, I can't circle my leg out. If I lean to the side, I can't circle my leg out. So there's the simple trick. If my right heel is trapped, I lean to my left, bring my heel back and come into the guard. Now he can just run a simple guard break and get back to mount. Break, pass, whatever he wants. Practice getting to the mount position. I get my arm safe. I clear the leg. If I want to go this side, I'm going to clear this leg. Kick line, boom. Across the hip, push, turn on my side feet above. Now I come and do the same thing on the other leg, turn. If I can't push his leg down, I shrimp away. Escape. If my left heel is trapped, sorry Eric, I turn on my right, and I come back. So one more time, go ahead, break and pass. Practice your break and passes, get to the mount. Oh no, my arms are behind him. First things first, I gotta get my arms safe. Now I gotta do the kick line to clear. Now I frame, frame, turn, get above the knee line. Above the knee line. If my ankle gets trapped, lean. Clear into the closed guard. Simple stuff, right? This is our elbow escape. Keep in mind, you may not be using your elbows at all. It could be your hands, it could be your forearms. See what works for your body style. Any question? I'll be around five minutes on this one. Ready? One, two, three. Time for sexual education. <laughs> We're going to talk about the birds and the bees of Jiu Jitsu. What's that? Okay, uh, so part three. I'm going to keep this pretty simple. This should, like I just mentioned, it's kind of like part one and part two had a baby. And if that doesn't make sense here, let's give you a visual application. So with the UPA, I have to trap an arm. Yeah? Trapping the leg, I don't want to say is a bonus, it's a vital part of the UPA escape. But there's kind of a built-in, once this player knows how to defend that, it's, it's a good defense for the UPA, but the problem is, the defense I'm going to mention here in a second leads us right into that second one. So, Aaron's down on me, he's got some control, still got my arm safe. Now, notice the difference with my leg over here. For the UPA, I'm going to keep my heel outside and tight to try to trap his leg, okay? For the other one, I did the kick line and brought my hamstring all the way to the ground. So we're still gonna start off. I'm gonna try my UPA first. Whenever I'm in this position, we're gonna think ahead maybe a couple seconds. I always call it your crystal ball. We're trying to think three seconds ahead of the roll. So however it is that I fix the arm, whether I come here, here, here. For now, sake, my favorite is to try to get inner elbow to inner elbow, bring my hand in and really tuck this elbow in. In a perfect world, I wanna trap this arm where his elbow is touching my ribs. Any space there is gonna be loose, he can pull his arm out. So boom, I've got my chicken wing. Now I step over. I do the same thing. I go to bridge and roll, but Aaron knows I've got this arm so well, he can't plant with his arm. So what often happens is he's gonna straighten this leg out to try to prevent himself to roll. So as I come here and I go to Upa, he straightens that leg out. Now look, I'm just gonna push the knee, feed my hand under and come into my pinch. Why is it vital guys that I pinch here? Because if I don't, he can tripod up and slide back to three quarter or knee cut pass or whatever the case is. So try not to leave this little butterfly action. Try to think about it like his leg, your legs are bear traps and you just boom, you just caught him in a bear trap. Now I have time. I can come to a throw frame. I don't necessarily want to leave this here. So if I'm an overhook, I always try to dig underneath. But if I can't, I can at least come to the throat. Like if he's got more chest pressure and I can't dig my hand down, come to your throat frame. Try to get him to back some of that weight hey. off. Hey! Now the same thing, guys. I'm going to try and get on the shoulder. Push. And again, uh, rotate with me. Some of you guys notice this little kind of issue that comes up sometimes here. I might be able to feed the first leg, and I might not be able to actually get his knee to kind of break friction. Aaron puts a lot of pressure on his knee. If I can't push his knee down, I block it, move my hips out, lead with my knee, and just like last time, if this heel gets trapped, which way do I have to lean? Away from the heel to circle my foot. Here I am in the closed guard, looking for my posture control. So now two times a little quicker. I'm looking for the oompa first. I've trapped his arm very well. It's gonna force him to post a leg if he wants to prevent the oompa. I'll take you this way this time so you can track the leg. Arm safe, here, here, or burger flip, either way, here. I step over, he plants his leg, I push, I come up, I snap and close. Some people will triangle, some people will cross. Just make sure that we've got a good pinch. 
Now, if I can't get under down to the hips, I can always come up to the shoulder, back some of his weight off, post the leg, shrimp away, lead with the knee, and if the heel gets caught, lean away, circle, and then back to my posture control. Okay, very last time from my head-on view. Hoopa first, when he blocks it, go to the elbow escape. Go ahead and come down on me. One, two, close guard. Simple stuff, right? Really fundamental. You guys will use this from white belt all the way to black belt. It's a very simple system. We're just going to combine our upa with our elbow escape. Look for that leg to come up. Whenever I'm going to upa somebody, I'm going to anticipate if I trap their arm, they either go with the flow or they have to post. When they do, they give me a lot of space to get to my half guard first. All right, any questions? I'll be around. Let's go six minutes on this one. After that, we'll grab water and roll. One, two, three.